So this, this guy, see, this guy was showing up to, to set every day. He was at rehearsal every day. Uh-huh. He was loyal to the project. Right. So in response to that, I had an obligation to be loyal to what he was given. Uh-huh. So I said, you know what? I'm not, a, I'm not an author. I ain't done no books. I'm not interested in doing a book. But I will sit down with your man and see what he has. Right. And I've got a brother-in-law, Don Smith, that's got a book out called uh, What I See. It's more, it's more Christian spiritual oriented. Okay. And I figured, you know, maybe Don... To help him, you know, as far as, you know, point him in the right direction. If I couldn't, and I knew another author, uh, another guy, Alan Black, another author, Jason Pullman, years ago, he helped, uh, um, his legendary underground book, he helped, um, a guy by the name of Bill Cooper write, uh, Behold the Pearl Horse. Okay. So I knew some authors out there. Right, right. You know, that, that I could point him in the right direction. So anyway, I sat down to meet with a guy, and it was very interesting. You know, he showed up, um, you know, he had his whole life story on cassette. He had another book with him by an uh, author by the name of Bobby Simone, who was actually a famous attorney for the mob. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this cat has got a book. He's in there with Bobby Simone. I'm like, I don't know if I want to get involved with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> if some so, shit go wrong, I might be in somebody trunk. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, that ain't cool. That's just not, you, you don't want to be like that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, I said, okay, well, let me see what he has. So he had his own life story on tape. And uh, the, the good thing is in the meeting, you know, I found out that he never carried a gun. He never had anybody killed, as far as I know. Right. His thing was pretty much just hustling. You no, know, he did his thing by word of mouth. That mm-hmm. was his, his, his tool was his mouthpiece. Right. He never hustled anybody that couldn't afford to be hustled. And that, I mean, he went after very, very wealthy individuals. So what I did is, I went home and Googled this cat. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Bam! Shit put stuff all over him. I'm like, what the? He's just all over. Like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, okay, this is the cat that was involved in Casino Heights back in the 90s. Uh-huh. So he is who he says he is. So I decided to take the story. And um, the story is very, very interesting. It's very funny. Um, the name of the book is called Jackpot. Okay. Nice story of Eugene Bogarino. Okay. And you can uh, pick it up on Amazon.com. That's Jackpot. Yeah. J-A-C-K-P-O-T. The life of Eugene Bogarino. Right. Um, Eugene Bogarino was an associate, uh, so they say, of the Bruno crime family. Okay. Out of Philadelphia. Um I'm trying to think, uh, uh, um, uh, Nicky, I can't think of his last name right now. He was big out of Philadelphia. Okay. But basically, um, what they did, brother, is they came up with a device. Him and another gentleman named Dennis McRash. That's the alias. He has several aliases. The FBI calls Dennis the genius. Okay. They actually came up with a computer device that they would hook up to slot machines and in less than 30 seconds, it would rig the slot machine. They had, they had to actually go get a computer chip and program the chip to make the slot machines hit. And they ended up taking Vegas for over $16 million. Wow. wow. So it, was, uh, it was basically the biggest slot machine heist in history. So this guy was a key figure in putting together a crew. And the only way they got caught was, um, they basically was a snitch that basically got caught, you know, running drugs. A guy out of Phoenix that got caught running drugs years ago. And then he ended up, you know, the FBI did the work. And uh, he ended up basically getting caught, and then he pretty much brought the whole crew down. Right, But right. they never got caught on camera. Right. They were avoiding the camera. You know, that's hard to do in Vegas. Absolutely. Even in the 90s, that's hard to do. <laughs> so, I mean, this taught me the dedication and loyalty that the crew had to, to just one another. Right. And that's what it, that type of dedication, although you don't want to have that type of dedication when you need to talk about organized crime or mm-hmm. you know, doing something against the law. I don't encourage that. Right. But the type of dedication <laughs> and loyalty it takes that they had is the same type of dedication and loyalty it takes between a producer and a writer, a producer and an actor, right. a crew to make sure that the project happens. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I was learning as I was reading about the story and doing research and listening to his tapes. Right. Very, 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 very funny guy, man. Hilarious. The guy could have been a stand-up comedian hands down. Okay. What also taught me is this, man. Yeah. Very loyal to his family. Whenever he, whenever he hit money and won money, whenever he got somebody out of some money, I mean, we're talking about very, very rich cats that he was taking money from. Right. Whenever he did that, the first thing he did, right back to his house, took care of his wife and family. Right. Hit his family. Period. Yeah. Hands down. Right. He didn't go get no rents for his car. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He didn't go buy another house. Right. You know what I'm saying? He took the family right, he took the money right back to his family. Yeah. To make sure his family was taken care of. That says a lot about an individual, man. No doubt. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, no question about that. You know what I mean? So, so Thomas, so, you know what I'm saying? After that project was done and over with, man, like, you know, what do we have to look forward to down the line or, or, or some of the things that you got planned or, you know, you got on your you got on your plate, man, that you want to get done, you know, come, um, you know, 2013? 
right now currently in production and actually in in uh in rotation is a play by the name of none of them know thyself love thyself okay. know thyself love thyself is the oldest law given to humans it's mm-hmm. on all the ancient temples all the way around the world right that's the oldest law given to humans is to know thyself love thyself right so we basically want to play and uh conscious oriented it, it tackles and challenges a lot of uh the religious psyche that's in our minds mm-hmm. to make sure that we're on point with the creator it's not about religion it's about your personal relationship with the creator, whatever you believe in. I don't care if you worship a tree, then you need to be loyal to that tree you worship. It. Right, no doubt. But basically, it does challenge the psyche. Mm-hmm. And we, so we, we were, um, you know, the time now is to answer people's questions. There's a lot of questions. People are hungry, you know, for a lot of information. This is the time to give it to them. So, you know, we tackle a lot of things. We tackle religion. We tackle uh, uh, relationships. We tackle sex. Because, you know, that, that's important in a relationship. Right. Hands down. No question. So, you know, of course, we address a lot of the issues. We address history, some aspects of history as well. Understanding your past so you know where you're going. Mm-hmm. You know the challenges you got to deal with. Because, see, history is right now, brother. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know it's saying? right now. It just happened a couple seconds ago. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt about that. So we got we to gotta understand that. People think it's, uh, oh, that's not important. It's very, very important. It's mm-hmm. very important. It's very prominent in your life. Right. The right. history. Understand that. Understand that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so uh, we intend to take Love Thyself, Love Thyself um, as far as we can. We have several cities interested. Dallas is interested. Uh, the next show will be December 1st here in Phoenix. Okay. Uh, we do have several venues. We, we uh, have yet to lock down one, but the, the, the date will be December 1st. Okay. Here in Phoenix, you can also go to the website, which is knowthyselflovethyself.com. Now, we're also in that play. We also address hip hop. We gotta remind people what the foundations of hip hop really is and where it came from. You can't call yourself an artist, a musician, if you don't understand jazz, if you don't understand blues, if you don't have some type of understanding of jazz and blues. Right. You know what I'm saying? To where hip hop actually came from, the metaphors that's used in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Now, Love Thyself, Love Thyself is also a theatrical presentation. We also bring to the table poetry and comedy. Mm-hmm. If people wanna be artists in the industry, they gotta understand. Poetry, the way you speak, the way you present yourself. Right. I'll give people an example of something. I'm a poet as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. We've been conscious since The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> In response to Nasir Escobar's, a.k.a. Nas. Yes, I understand how high the sky is and what the circumference of pie is. Pie, your neo gland. The sun reflects a light source and gives me a complexion that Satan can't stand. Kanye. Don't you interrupt me, man. I'll dismiss your ass class like you're Spicoli and I, Mr. Hand. My DNA possesses more biological agents than Israel or Iran. I inhale oxygen, exhale ether, and burn you where you stand. See, that's all poetry. Right. And a lot of artists don't understand they shy away from poetry, but poetry has helped me become a better artist. Right. And even my hip hop. You know, career that I want to go into eventually. No doubt. Yeah. This caused me to, to enunciate, to, to pronounce. Yeah. And if you can't, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the music now, brother, they lose you right away. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's just covered by a lot of a repetition and beats. Get back to the original form. Right. And from that original form, you can take it any direction you want to take it. And and I'm glad you had. I'm glad you spoke on that, man, because you actually give cats. You know what I'm saying? For those that are listening right now, whether I don't care how old you are, but mostly I'm speaking to maybe you know what I mean the younger generation. You know what I'm saying? You got to know your history. You got to know your past before you can know your future. You know what I'm saying? Before you can devise the way which path you're going to take in order to secure your future and so a lot of these cats really don't understand that but it's cats like me and you you know what I'm saying Thomas to help you know what I'm saying guide them in this direction man to keep them live and keep them understanding you know what they need to do and the things how they need to get it done though you know what I'm saying yes, so sir. yeah no question so so Thomas man it was a beautiful thing man that you came out you spent your time with us a little bit you know what I'm saying you know get, dropping a couple of jewels on us you know what I'm saying it was a beautiful thing man you know what I'm saying but before you go man I want to give you the opportunity to um shout out and plug everything and everybody man that's helped you get to this point in your career, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'd definitely like to, first of all, give you a big thanks for, up for what you're doing, Sam. No, you know what I'm saying? It's always the people that's closest around me right now. Yeah. Uh, basically, Stan Lewis, and make sure y'all continue to support this program because it's very important. No doubt. Uh, Danny O'Neill, another book with Cat, has been there over the years for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Helped me out with a lot of the things in life. Gave me some very, very good advice. Yeah. You know, my man, uh, Bob Bob Ware, who may not be listening, but another brother that's been there for me. Right. My father, who's been very important in my life, always been there for me. Be a father to your children. You don't right. have to have a relationship. 
the best relationship with the mother. But make sure you that for your children. Period. Right. Be there for your kids. Yeah, no doubt. You know, my brothers, all my brothers around, man. Alex, Alex Hernandez was out here. I don't know if he's listening, but he's been there for me over the years. Uh -huh. My man in Florida, Doug Reed, mm -hmm. he's been there for me. Renard Griffin, I could go on and on and on and on and on, bro. <laughs> I know you can't, baby, but I, you know what I'm saying? I just want you to get in the majors. You know what I'm saying? Those that, you know what I'm saying? You want to give some recognition to. You know what I'm saying? And so, yes, sir. yeah, for all my listeners out here, you heard it first. Right here on Mafia Magazine Radio, man, I told you that this cat was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? If there's some things or something you want to know about, you know what I'm saying? You can always get at this cat, man. His name is Tarvis L. Alberti. You know what I'm saying? And if you're having a little trouble finding him, you can always hit me up, baby, and I'll take you right to him. Hey, Tarvis, baby. I um, appreciate you, man. You know I love, man. I respect what you do, man. And um, may you always continue to be blessed and prosper in the things that you do. You yes, hey, yo, yo, when you go get EDI on from the Outlaws, I got to give a shout out to the Outlaws, man. My man, EDI. <laughs> that's a friend of mine. That's his brother, Malcolm. They yeah. Get some niggas on. Yeah, they going to be on, man. We got idiot no lined up. You know? <laughs> you know, the Outlaws support us like nobody else. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, we got so too. My man, check for my man, Stan. My man, uh, uh, Substantial, brother. Yeah. Out of Brooklyn. Get some Stand on that too. I got him. I got him. Yeah, no doubt, baby. So, all right, man, I'm going to say peace to you, man, and I'll speak to you at a later date, all right? All right, brother. Peace. Thank you, Sam. No doubt, baby.